Welcome to AWS Conversations with Leaders. My name is Miriam McLemore and I am an enterprise strategist with AWS. I have the great privilege and opportunity today to interview Krista Kunin. Krista, could you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your role? I would love to, thank you very much. So my name is Krista Kernan. I am sitting here in Frankfurt, Germany, and I'm actually the group CIO of Deutsche Bahn, so the German railway, and at the same time, the CEO of DB Sistel, the digitization and IT partner of German railway. I'm not really, I don't really have a background in IT. I have a master's in economics and an MBA and through all different stations from consulting and selling recipe cards through the mail with direct marketing to different stations inside DB. In the end, I ended up at DB Sistel on the more finance side. I was the CFO for a year until I started re imagining what the strategy for an internal IT company could look like and ended up where I am today. So I look forward to discussing all sorts of different topics all around leadership with you today. Krista, thank you so much. And what a fascinating background that you have. Could you tell us a little bit about how Deutsche Bahn is structured? Basically, Deutsche Bahn is uh, one of the larger German companies with uh, around 320,000 employees today. Our main business is in Germany, running different railway companies and also running the infrastructure for the railway in Germany. I think we have approximately 220,000 of our 320,000 employees here in Germany, and we run passenger trains, both long distance and short distance. We run cargo trains. We have around 6,000 train stations here in Germany that we take care of, and approximately 34,000 kilometers of tracks that are also uh, what we take care of in general. As uh, if you look at outside of Germany, uh, the DB Schenker is part of the DB group and DB Arriva is also part of the DB group. So we do run buses and trains outside of Germany as well. And DB Schenker is a large logistic company that uh, is active worldwide. Wow, what a, an amazing scope. Um, and you mentioned that you were reimagining how DB could operate. Um, can you talk a little bit about, I know you've gone through a major transformation in a pretty short period of time. Can you talk about that transformation? I would love to. So when I started at DB Sistel, we were looking at what kind of an IT operation does DB need to reach its goals? How do we as an IT company inside DB have to position ourselves to actually help DB reach its goals in the amount of trains and passengers we transport every day and, and so on and so on. And soon noticed that our traditional IT service provider role just wasn't enough anymore. So we started transformation towards being a digital integrator uh, and enabler, but also a digital innovator next to still being an IT service provider. And that took us on a journey that both, both transformed us in the way we operate and the way we work but also in what technologies and how we employ technologies. So it's really been an overall transformation, not only from the, on the technological side, but also, and very importantly, on the side of where we, how we work and how our culture is developing and what our culture looks like today. Yeah, so you must have had to make changes in your management structure to accomplish this. Can you share a little bit about that? Oh, yeah, I'll try to keep it short because the changes we made at the end of the day were, were enormous. Of course, at the beginning, we looked at who is actually on board with a, such a significant change, who of the management is actually as enthusiastic about it and believes in it as much as we do. And so there were a couple of people who moved on to other roles outside of DB Sistel at that point in time. But I think the most significant change was that we looked at the management role and especially at the disciplinary responsibilities and separated a lot of that and, and actually allocated it to different roles. So today there is not one single role that has the classical management role of the disciplinary side and the steering side and all that together, but especially the, the people role that actually Actually, uh, the leadership role was separated into three parts. So today, the product owner that 
is in charge of what is a team supposed to do, the agility master that helps a team with how they're going to do it, and the team themselves. They all have part of that role today. So I think that in the end was the most significant change. And it's an ongoing change since you have to unlearn the way you've worked all these decades and relearn what it means to work in this way. I'm thinking that that probably created um, a groundswell of ownership for the change. Is that, that what happened? And how did you measure the change? Very good questions. And yes, I think this ownership, it being our transformation, not you know, not the management team's transformation, but DB Systel's transformation. That was a very, very big aspect that actually is there until today. So being able to actually influence how the culture in your company develops, what technologies will actually be implemented on a larger scale, all those things to be able to actually actively influence that created a lot of ownership. As you can imagine, sometimes those kind of initiatives, those kind of movements can go a bit far. So there was always uh, the need to find a good balance between reminding everybody that we're actually a company that needs to earn money, but also keeping up the enthusiasm. So that, that, was, that was a fantastic thing. And how did we actually measure the success? Well, in, in several different ways. Since the day we started, our rev- like in the last five years, approximately maybe it's five and a half years, our revenues have doubled. So that's a nice way of measuring success. Um, We started at around 3,300, 3,400 employees. We're now at 5,000 plus quite a few externals that are still there. Um, We are now recognized in the market. So the the name DB Sustel is actually recognized in the IT market. And we have a lot of uh, applicants who want to come and work with us and who want to actually be involved in creating this culture and refining this culture and continuing to evolve this culture. And most importantly, our customers inside DB, their feedback is what really shows us how far we've come and how much has changed. And their feedback, of course, naturally, we still have areas where we need to improve, and that's uh, what we strive for all the time. Wow, it, it's a, just an impressive story. You know, one of the things that I hear from customers when I speak to them is reskilling. You've talked about the number of employees you have and and even a larger number now, how did you reskill and do you continue to make sure that your team has the skills that they need? Reskilling is a very, very core part of our entire transformation, both on the cultural and uh, the way we work side of things uh, and also on the technological side of things. So on the sort of cultural and how we're changing our work environment from hierarchical to self-organization, we have a program that actually reskills, especially the product owners and the agility masters, since those I know in the traditional software development sense, we had some, but not in the sense that we have implemented it. So there is an, an entire reskilling program there that they can take part in and learn what it actually means to to be uh, working in those roles. We also have a program where coaches um, help the teams understand and learn what it means to work inside a self-organized team and what kind of roles the teams need and how the teams like what kind of agile tools they can use to actually make their work more effective. On the other hand, we have um, the the technological change um, that that was started through the migration into the cloud that we're finishing this year um, is enormous. As you obviously know, it is both the actual getting like running down our data center, but it goes through every part of our organization. We do a lot of software development as well. So we reskilled everybody who was actually um, working with the cloud providers, but we also reskilled all the software developers. And to do that, um, we put together a list of all our employees and looked at it very closely, had a, had a discussion with every single one of them to see what is it you do, they do today, what their skills are today, and where they want to be in X months when maybe their current role becomes obsolete and how we can help them to reskill to actually get to that point. So that program is uh, ongoing. Obviously, it's an always ongoing program, but it means that we reskilled several thousand people in the last couple of years. 
Well, and uh, obviously one of the outcomes, and you mentioned at the very beginning, was innovation and driving innovation into the organization and and for the company. Can you speak a little bit about how your teams innovate? Absolutely. It was interesting because when we started this transformation, the company obviously very classically was uh, divided up into different departments and there were really strong silos that If they were going to work together, it always had to be escalated up and back down again. And it was quite an effort to actually bring people together with the different types of knowledge that were necessary to pursue different new subjects to innovate and so on. And starting this transformation and starting this general transformation and also setting a goal that one of our roles was going to be digital innovation was really instrumental in it releasing a lot of energy so and giving space so like we created spaces where where anybody who had an idea or or was really interested in implementing a certain technology could go and find like-minded individuals to actually um, see if it was viable and so for example we have um, our sky deck which is an innovation space, I wouldn't call it lab, but space, where we brought together people from inside DB Systel, but also people from DB Systel with other with our, our internal partners and customers inside DB to look at, okay, so what are the business challenges and how, from a totally different IT perspective, can we help both with technology, but more importantly, first understanding what the issue actually was, and then looking at whether to throw technology at it was actually necessary or if we could solve it together with a slightly lower tech approach. So at that, that, for example, on the other hand, teams found each other around topics that our, our internal customers or our external customers really needed and started innovating by coming up with new solutions. And I mean, to be honest, migrating into the cloud was a huge innovation driver as well, obviously. And, and just having the space that after decades of, of the data centers being the core of DB Systel and being the pride of DB Systel, innovating by saying, okay, this is a new era. We want to be ahead of the wave and not behind the wave this time. So let's innovate and see how we can make using a, a public cloud work for us as DB and for us as DB Systel. Great. Krista, you have been envisioning this transformation and driving this transformation, but you lead a very large organization. What are some of the things that you do personally to demonstrate your commitment to this new innovative, agile adoption of new technology? I find, you know, the the team needs to see leadership commitment. What are some of the things you do? That's an excellent question, since that's a question that my colleagues and I ask ourselves all the time. What what do we need to do? How do we need to communicate? How do we show that we really believe in this? And we've tried out and or maybe evolved several different forms of communication. So at the very beginning, when it was only two of us, we did large strategy events that had like uh, anywhere between 250 and 1,000 people at a time to just explain why the need was there to change because, I mean, imagine this, a company that so far had always earned a nice amount of money, has always been very stable, was at least well known for its stability, if not necessarily reacting to the customers in the perfect way or whatever. So people were sitting here thinking, so why do we need to go in a completely different direction? So our job at the beginning, my colleague and I, was to explain to them if we continue this way, there's a good chance that we'll just turn into the bad bank of IT inside DB. And all the interesting new things that are coming up in the market that we could see, not just on the horizon, that were basically right there, will go past us. So we we communicated a lot about the need to change. And then we had, as a next phase, we had big events where actually our communications team came up with strategy games to bring people in, to to involve them, especially in the culture change. So they would do, it wasn't just role plays, it was all sorts of games that they would do at tables and we would be right there switching from table to table, um, discussing it with them, playing the games with them and all that. We had um, smaller communication circles where they could ask questions. Obviously we were as involved as we could be in in developing the direction we wanna go, but we also, and I think that's almost more important, 
we let go at certain steps and certain points in time to actually let that bottom up movement evolve and let that bottom up movement work through what what actually fits with a company. If this is where we want to go and this is the direction, how are they going to do it and what is their input? So this combination of communicating as much as possible, but also letting go and actually showing that we meant it, that we are not the experts who, who decide everything, but certain things are decided by the experts and the teams because they're the ones who know what is going on and who know what needs to be done. And it, it was quite the journey for us as a management team, also as it got larger, we're now four in, in the upper management, to, to learn to change ourselves, to learn that, you know, we can't just expect everybody around us to adopt a different way of working. We ourselves need to change how we work, how we go about things, how open we are to discussions and to also change when we intervene and when we coach. It's fascinating, especially, I guess, thinking of a traditional German company and hierarchical culture, such a, an amazing pivot. That, that you have done with the company and with your team. Um, obviously, we're living in some crazy times um, right now globally. Has this pivot that you had already made, do you feel like it made you more resilient? We're talking to a lot of companies about resiliency, right, in the face of change or, or troubling times. Can you speak a little bit about, you know, did this create the agility and resiliency to face uncertain times? It, it, it's a great question, because if you look back at the last, I guess now, three and a half months or so, everything we've worked at, everything we set in motion from changing the way we work together, changing it to teams that are very close knit and um, that work in a network um, and decide, for example, uh, in at least in part, from where do they work? Do they work from the office? Do they work from the customer? Do part of them work from home? Um, using different methods like the Kanban board, the stand-ups and all that, but also importantly, moving to the to different technologies, moving to the cloud and being able to adapt to it quickly. All that paid off at the beginning of the crisis and throughout it so far. We managed to send everybody into home office inside a day or two. Productivity has been amazing, at least as high as beforehand. And in parts, we actually had to ask if people actually start working in the evenings because they were sitting at home and, and so into it. But it, it has really paid off. We've been able to scale our VPN infrastructure inside just two or three weeks to be able to go from only maybe 12,000 uh, DB employees that were able to work through VPN to now um, 60,000 concurrent users that can work through VPN using the technology, using all the new technology we had implemented, but also because the teams work together in such a different way and, and so on and so on. There's so many examples. We were able to keep up the entire IT, keep it running, keep all the software um, development running, do large implementations uh, from afar. It's been fantastic. I mean, basically, this is, I think this is the era of IT. And in this crisis, we at least were able to show why we were doing all these things and what a large benefit DB has from how we're working and from what we've built up in the last couple of years. Again, just the, the scale of what you're doing Innovation in a remote and and challenging time. Are you doing or thinking about innovation differently? I have to say that um, probably uh, it's worked a lot better than than I had hoped. Um, the teams are still doing workshops, are still you know banding things off of each other and all that. So um, thanks to the fact that the teams are so close knit, they are able to continue pursuing innovative uh, ideas and, and ways of working in addition. I do believe that in the future, uh, we will be working more remotely than we had in the past. But I do think um, especially innovation will benefit in the future from a good mixture of teams and people working from home, but also coming into the office working from there and just looking at at what point in time, what is the best way to work. But luckily, at least for the last couple of months, even that aspect has worked surprisingly well. 
Yeah, it's interesting. I think we're all trying to figure out at this point in time, what does that new mix look like of, of remote and, and together um, and having the technology in place to enable that certainly will make it a smoother um, and a more open decision process, right? Krista, thank you so much for your time. What a fascinating journey that you have taken your company on and positioned it for the future. So I, I very much appreciate you taking the time to speak with us today. My pleasure. Thank you very much for a great conversation. 